We are winners on the road. FC Cincinnati caps a beautiful season long run to win the Supporter Shield and officially crown themselves the elite team of 2023. Not only that, you have Acosta, Noonan, and more all running in the league for all in the running for league awards. A number one seed in a playoff race, a CONCACAF spot next year. Who needs drugs when your club has you flying so close to the sun? Life is good in Cincinnati. Thanks for tuning in to Cincinnati Soccer Talk, and like many of you, we have been following this club since 2016, and I've seen many ups and downs. It is hard to put into words how good this one feels after that long, deep valley we came through. So here to help me out, we brought back a star-studded cast and a whole bunch of guests tonight to give this show a proper celebration. Let's move right along into it. First up, we'll welcome in my trusted, uh, this guy makes ev every episode of uh, Cincinnati Soccer Talk a real treat or completely derails it. Could go either way. Brian Weigel, welcome in tonight. You know what I want? Uh, there's a special moment in the U.S. Open Cup when we knocked off uh, the Columbus Crew, Buckeye, FC, whatever they were called then. And the gentleman that is below me on the screen had the best reaction take. <laughs> oh, yeah. And hopefully he unmutes himself in time to do it. But I need a Nick Suberling. <laughs> you really want that to start the show? <laughs> oh, babe. You should, you should have loaded the video up. Uh, oh, I should I have. I'm a little. Funny. I did all my show prep on Sunday and not Monday because I was slammed yeah. at work. So yeah, sorry guys. I can. Uh, oh man, I don't even know. I. I. I, well, I you really want your vocal cords? Don't hurt your vocal cords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> feels good, Nick. It feels good being champions. And I'll tell you what, guys, it's, I can't, I still can't believe it's real that, I mean, the mountain, I mean, not the mountaintop, but by golly, the final stage of that mountaintop. So it's amazing, amazing feeling. Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks and welcome into the show, Brian. Next up, we'll introduce the majestic beast of the Bailey, Mr. Bill Wolf. <laughs> All right, Bill, how you doing? I'm good. I don't know how to follow behind uh, Nick Superling on that one. I'm, I'm guessing that half his house is downstairs trying to figure out what's going on. But um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if Bill's uh, Bill's uh, beautiful bride would call him a majestic beast. So uh, that's something else there. Oh no, that's what she calls me every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes, on fire. All right. Well, thanks, Bill. We're glad you're back and with us tonight and uh, out of the Bailey. And finally, the legend, the deep voice Morgan Freeman wishes he had. Nicholas J. Suberling is back, ladies and gentlemen. How it goes at Subs? Thanks for having me, guys. This is, um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, believe it or not. As somebody who used to host the show and do podcasts for, you know, 16 or 17 years, I, I don't even know what to say anymore these days. So I'm just glad you guys, uh, brought me out of retirement so we can uh, so we can celebrate <laughs> yeah we are uh, happy to have you the man that started it all and uh, uh, yeah i think i think a lot of us remember those good years in usl and then we got so beat down during some of the, the rougher ones that it, it just feels good to be back it feels good to be back on top real quick before we get into our first guest tonight is uh brought to you by apollo home and they have big news in order to to, to capitalize and to take advantage of this awesome FC Cincinnati success. They said, you know what? We got to raise our game. We got to go bigger too. And so for the month of October, they introduced a 144 month, 0% interest plan on many of their brand new HVAC systems. Uh, incredible deal to honor FC Cincinnati. So you can imagine there's a whole bunch of uh, fine print that takes to be in, in all that jazz. So if you wanted to go onto their website, check it out. Um, and uh, see if you can qualify for that sweet 0% rate. And in this environment, whoosh, they go up every <laughs> single day. So uh, if, if you can uh, qualify that 0% rate for 12 years on a brand new HVAC system, apollohome.com to schedule. All right, Brian, I think we have a guest tonight. Oh, you're going to let me do the uh, yeah. introductions here. So, all right, well, everybody, I think the man, the myth, the legend, the person we've been waiting for to, uh, to join us in this moment of glory tonight, we have the... <laughs> Truly the man that started it all. I remember seeing this gentleman at the uh, LaSalle band room talking about his dream of, of MLS. And, and seven years later, now we're hosting the MLS Supporter Shield, which is an amazing feat. So co-CEO of FC Cincinnati, Jeff Birding. I think we all need to give Jeff a big round of applause, everybody. Yeah. How many times have you been on the show, Jeff? Good and bad. 
Uh, probably close to a dozen. Yeah, I think so. So Jeff, uh, I think. I, yeah. Oh well, we're 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 blessed to have you you back in in a part of the club. So I think you were there on uh, on Sunday. I saw some pictures on an airplane. After all. I say the hardships, the learning that we experienced the first three years, you know, new leadership, new soccer uh, minds in, in the club. Um, I mean, what was just your emotion, the ownership, the, the, the emotion of the ownership group when that final whistle hit down there in Saturday in, in Toronto? What went through your mind? Well, certainly uh, a heart filled with gratitude uh, just for the opportunity to be a part of something that's special for Cincinnati. Uh, when Carl and I launched the club, we said we wanted to win and and show the the country, show the world that this is a championship city. And uh, you, you know, we meant what we said, and we certainly experienced a level of success uh, in the USL, making the playoffs every year. Of course, winning the Sporter Shield five years ago in the USL, and then um, yeah, the the transition into Major League Soccer. Uh, the the league made us go quicker than anyone had ever before, and they never repeated that. And they haven't done it since. I think they learned their lesson that actually teams uh, require a bit of time to prepare. Um, you know, I would offer St. Louis certainly as the model. St. Louis was also afforded all those years of preparation, uh, and they used it wisely. And I congratulate them. But uh, I said gratitude because yeah, our fans stuck with us and gave us an opportunity to reboot after those lessons. And, um, I just, I felt enormous gratitude that, uh, we had delivered on our promise. You know, speaking of promises, those of us, those of us that have followed this club have followed the leaders have followed the different coaches and, you know, everything through the years, we've always heard, um, the, the same three things, you know, uh, the pillars, community, family, and field. And it feels like, you know, obviously when, th when, when things are good and it always feels like those are, uh, hitting and they're doing well, but even in the even in the last few years, we saw a lot of the West End Foundation and or the FC Cincinnati Foundation, a lot of work in the West End, a lot of mini pitches. How do you guys plan on uh, keeping those promises going forward? Well, they they've been our values since I first started writing on my legal pad what it would take to create a third major league franchise in Cincinnati. It was going to take a uh, top level passion and ownership. It was going to take experienced sports management team. It's going to require um, a, a viable venue to host matches and bring fans. Um, it was going to take quality soccer that was pleasing the eye that people would, would pay to, to, to watch. Uh, and then a relevant sports brand and a relevant sports brand to us was a team built around the values of being a winning uh, team, a family friendly, inclusive club and a franchise that gives back and make the community better. And I, I would say that our values have never strayed. Our ability to deliver the winning part was certainly tested by the quick move into major league soccer, but we kept building and growing uh, what we were doing in the community. We've exceeded all of our uh, requirements uh, by quite a bit in the, um, community benefits agreement in the West end. And, um, you know, we, we've stayed true to be an inclusive family friendly club. And, um, look, those are always going to be the values as long as Carl and I are, are, are running, running the club. It just took us a little time, of course, to deliver on that winning part as a major league soccer franchise. There's right. no question. You I know? mean, I mean, it really didn't though, Jeff. I mean, look at all these other clubs, you know, the Vancouver's, the Montreal's, the Orlando's, all these other expansion sides, like Minnesota, who's looked at as a hallmark expansion club, and they haven't even come close to what we've done. And I think the ability to adapt and change, but also putting those resources out there to allow, you know, the club to thrive like this is just impressive. It really is. Well, thank you. Look, I want to make clear, you know, um, we certainly have always wanted to win and proudly represent. And certainly we made some um, personnel moves in terms of soccer leaders that, that didn't work out. And, and, you know, we transitioned on, but we certainly had some good players, you know, uh, Alvaro Barrial, Brandon Vasquez, uh, Nick Haglin, Lucho Acosta, you know, they, they, they um, Adversity either can can defeat you or, or or make you grow, 
and you have a choice. And I think all of those names, but certainly I would say on, you know, on behalf of uh, Carl and, and, and myself, you, you know, we use that adversity to grow. And we learn that in, in this league, uh, MLS experience uh, is really important. We talk about, does this person know what right looks like? Well, Chris and Pat and, and Dom and, and, and uh, Kenny and Paul and others who we brought in, they knew what right looked like. They had experienced the winning that we saw it. So we were certainly willing to spend um, and use our stadium and our training facility and that this is a high quality um, a place to live and raise your family. We used all that to our advantage, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we needed different leaders uh, to, 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 to manage that and uh, build out the rest of the ro- roster and, and of course set a culture around accountability and, and, and having fun and ultimately winning together. And, and that's what this is about. And, you know, again, Carl and I have always wanted to win on behalf of the city. We we've been, you, you mentioned other clubs. I can't speak for them, but we've made no secret about our ambition from the beginning. I mean, we thought we had something that we, we had figured out, which was that soccer was going to be the next big thing. And we were ahead of Nashville and Charlotte and Miami and San Diego and uh, St. Louis. We were ahead of them. And w- we were launching the USL uh, with real ambition. We were going to test the concept. And we were determined to get into Major League Soccer as quickly as possible before those other uh, cities maybe figured out what we were on to, which was, this is where you wanted to be. Um, I'm going to be honest, as I've said, when we were awarded the expansion bid, we didn't know that we were going to be required to start playing the next year. We would have taken that extra year like Nashville had, but uh, the league had other ideas and, you know, Nashville uh, has done well. Um, Sacramento, you know, sort of the other Mm -hmm. finalists, they still don't have an MLS team. And so, you know, we, we don't, we don't look back and say we made the wrong decision to go in because that was the uh, opportunity presented was we're going to, we want Cincinnati and we want you to come in and start playing next year. And again, we were, we, we had always said we wanted to be ahead of all those other cities Well, they were giving us the opportunity. We just didn't know really what the implications would be. But as I said, the adversity certainly made us stronger. Um, and, And I say this respectfully, but, you know, the history of successful enterprises is littered with those who failed at the beginning. And, um, you know, people want to, uh, national writers, I want to say this, you know, sort of make that our story, um, only talking about the adversity we suffered for the first three years. And they forget that this is a city that embraces club for three years in the USL, where we tested the concept. Mm-hmm. We were ambitious. We made the playoffs in the first year and every year thereafter. We, we won effectively what is the USL Supporter Shield. Um, Carl and I wanted to win, and, and we did. But then we moved in quickly, and we didn't. And we, we learned, and we're certainly grateful that the fans stuck with us, which is back to gratitude. Um, and, and, and now here we are at the top of the league as it relates to the regular season, a chance to maybe set a record. And we're going to get after that, uh, that cup. Yeah, I think before you jump in there, Bill, I think before uh... – one of the key things is that the, despite the frustration, and we all were frustrated. I know you were frustrated, Jeff, but the right. the fans will stick with you when they see a vision and they see a committed ownership. And I and I can honestly say I don't think that was ever lost. That was never lost. You saw the spending on a Brenner. You saw the the uh, spending on Audi and, and all that. We, the the it was just the execution just didn't happen, but the fans, the fans will stay with you if they believe. And then I don't think that was ever lost. The faith was never lost. And now you got a, a stinking waiting list on your season. Ticket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good problem. Well, I think have. the other part was the stadium, right? I mean, look at the stadium that we built and there's no other ownership group in our league. That's doing uh, going out on a limb and making the financial commitment that we made on our stadium. Our stadium has been named not only the best in major league soccer, but as you know, last year we won two awards as the best soccer stadium in the world in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so I, I think that also speaks to the values and ambition of our ownership group. And to your point, yeah, the the execution on the soccer side really took, you know, I give full credit to Chris and um, Pat Noonan and, and the soccer staff we brought in. But let me share you, and, and I'm sure, I know you've had Chris on, they wouldn't have come but for the ambition. They wouldn't have come, yeah. but for the facilities. Um, 
look, I, I literally, you, you want to know, you asked, what was it like? Uh, is, is the last second ticked off? Chris and I looked at each other and I said, that, that's why you came. This is why you came, is, is, is to, to live moments like this. And, and he 100%, you know, like big, uh, big, big moment there. And um, this is an ambitious ownership group. And when you're someone as talented as Chris and Pat and our coaching staff, you know, you, you, you want to work where there's enormous ambition. There's the facilities to back it up. There's the support to go sign players like Aaron Bupenza um, and um, to build the stadium and the fan base that makes uh, the stadium a, a fortress that makes it come alive, that makes it really hard for the opposition. I mean, that's, you know, that unless you want to be in New York city and Miami, you know, LA, why would you want to be anywhere but where this franchise is with this great support that you yeah. can have? So Jeff, um, you know, I was thinking of course, back as, as you know, we, we had such a great, um, high Saturday, but thinking back to how we got here and, and, you know, one of the the memories that popped in my head was from a few years back, um, I was in Finland and, um, got in the cab to, to head into the office and the cab driver recognized my Jersey, right? I had, the, I had the crest on and he's like, FC Cincinnati, MLS, you know, and we had a whole conversation, you know, driving into the office about MLS and, and Cincinnati and how are they doing? And, you know, what's the hopes? And of course we were doing lousy, but that didn't matter. And, and, you know, I think about the fact that I'm, you know, halfway across the world and, and there's a cab driver who knows essentially not maybe where Cincinnati is, but what Cincinnati is. And, and the fact that, um, you know, now, you know, years later, we have Albright in, we have Noonan in, we have a, a winning team getting the supporter shield. Uh, we have Messi, right, bringing all these eyes to 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 MLS. Um, what what does this, I mean, do? I mean, like, how do you see all of this attention that Cincinnati is getting now, either through more eyes on MLS or or more eyes on us through the success we're having? Uh, what does this do to Cincinnati globally? I mean, how does it change Cincinnati? Well, put it on the map. Well, we said we were going to promote Cincinnati to the world and bring the world to Cincinnati. You may remember we said that at the initial announcement, and I repeated it. The press conference um, announced we were bringing Crystal Palace to to Nippert. And when you think of all the international soccer that we've hosted, um, teams with the U.S. men, the U.S. women, of course, Leagues Cup, um, uh, what Apple that platform uh, allows for people around the world to to watch. Um, you know, it's it's a tremendous opportunity. Um, you, you, we've had effectively what I'll call scouts or soccer leaders from other, from federations and from other uh, international clubs, of course, interested in our players or interested in partnerships. We have some partnerships uh, around the globe that we don't advertise, um, but um, I'm also on the board of Ready and of course the Chamber of Commerce and the CRBC and Visit Cincy, our Convention Visitors Bureau. And I get called in to help do the recruitment pitches for companies that are looking at North American headquarters uh, or looking to uh, invest in, in other ways in Cincinnati. And look, we in a city our size, we have to use everything we have to our advantage. And, and we said soccer is the one sport with global currency. It's the sport that decision makers around the world probably care about personally. Um, and the, we show a level of, I'll call it international sophistication, when people see how soccer is embraced in this market, certainly in, in comparison to what they might see in some other larger markets here in the U.S. Um, we have a lot of international companies here. Um, many of them are, are big supporters of ours looking to expand. And we're going to continue to be a part of this growth ecosystem in Cincinnati. Jeff, I just want to say uh, I don't really necessarily have a question. I, I do want to say congratulations. I, and like Bill, I think back to the very, very beginning stages of FC Cincinnati before you even kicked the ball. I remember reaching out to Fumi about doing an interview with you on our podcast, like the fourth or fifth episode. And you're probably like, who are these guys? <laughs> but we did it. And now, like you said, you've been on here 12 or so times. What I will say, and I probably speak for a lot of fans, can you do us a favor and can you give – 
Chris Albright and Pat Noonan a raise. Keep those guys around because <laughs> these guys are fantastic. They have done a fantastic job here. Well, thank you. Let me, let me offer, you've probably noticed that we've been somewhat regularly announcing extensions to the core of, of, of our roster. And, and I'm citing that to say Carl and I want to have sustainable success, sustainable winning. This isn't a one-year phenomenon. And uh, Chris, to his credit, knows that that's, uh, that's our plan. And so we're, we're, we're going about trying to lock people up so that the strength of the team is here for a long time. We want to win uh, the rest of this year. We want to win next year. We want to win the year after that. And you know, we're going to put those wooden spoons in a far away rear view mirror. <laughs> yeah, the, I think the days of people mailing you those is over, Jeff. So that's that's great. <laughs> but uh, I, I, again, I, I want to say you, you can either let that defeat you or you just grow stronger. Yeah. And, and, and learn from it. And I'm a big believer in the saying, live curiously. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, while we were losing, it's not as if we were. Uh, you know, curled up in the corner crying. We were mm. learning um, from the rest of the league and what we had done wrong. And we were making adjustments and some of them were public and some of them weren't. Mm. Uh, but we, we, uh, we adjusted the plan based on our learnings of what it was going to take to win in this league. And, and we, we moved accordingly. And um, again, I, I think some people from outside our club take a very simple view because it's an easier narrative to talk about um, and, you know, I, I accept that people are going to want to think what they think. Um, I always tell my kids, the line doesn't care what the gazelles think. The line eats the gazelles. <laughs> uh, and um, and we, we don't worry about uh, those voices outside. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Cincinnati people underestimate the city in a whole. They underestimate the fan base. The fan base is very passionate, as you know, winning or losing. They're they're all here. They're all uh, they, they make their voices heard and, and rightfully so. And then the club has has. Um, done a great job and i actually think we have one of the best fan front office coaching player relationships out there i mean you saw nick Haglin jump into the crowd i mean that's just that's i was just there the, yeah that's, it was it was amazing yeah was that's just, just the kind of club we have and uh and um I, you know based on what some of this social media commentary i think there were a lot of people around the country that really respected that relationship between the players the club mm -hmm. uh, and our fans it's authentic it's real it's been there since day mm -hmm. one uh, we've, we've said from the beginning that our supporters, the creation of the Bailey, that really is the impetus of what allowed us to create interest uh, and therefore success in the in the first season and beyond uh, at Nippert. Yeah. Um, I want to be fair. That was always our hope. That's why Carl and I, as you recall, went around to bars and where, uh, where soccer was being watched on Saturdays and Sundays and bought beers and said, we want to create this supporter section that appropriately be, named the Bailey. But at the end of the day, it that that relationship is in is I know you know I'm preaching the choir. It's real. <laughs> it's authentic. You know, Jeff Smith, um, Dan McNally, Kate Solomon, um, the the folks that have been, of course, Carl and our ownership group. It's it's real, and yep. you certainly saw that the other night at the airport. All right, Brian's giving me the, the wrap it up signal, so I gotta. <laughs> he's taking the blame, but uh, we appreciate you coming on. Any uh, as you go, uh, any, any any plans for Wednesday? I'm guessing there's big plans for Wednesday, right? Yes. Uh, so of, of course, uh, we're th thrilled to welcome Frankie Amaya uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, New York Red Bulls. Should have stayed put, huh? Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, we're 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 we're. we're um, we're we'll welcome them to the fortress, and uh, I'm sure fans are going to see a heck of a match. The team will be uh, ready to go, and um, at the conclusion of the match, um, there'll be a stage set up on the field, and um, uh, our supporters, uh, representative of our supporter groups, will will uh, bring out and present the the trophy. There'll be a very 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 brief program, um, and then we'll get on to. Um, the presentation and then um, a lap around the field uh, with uh, with the shield, and All it'll right. be and it'll be awesome. And then I know, and I should acknowledge this: this is our supporters' trophy, and so we look forward to working with our supporters groups to find opportunities to make sure that our fans throughout the region, um, including in the West End, have an opportunity to uh, to interact with and to experience uh, the shield. 
because the of course the origin of this is our supporters and for FC Cincinnati that's certainly appropriate place to start. Awesome. That's awesome. Great to hear, man. All right, Jeff, we'll let you out of here and uh we'll, we'll thank keep you for your on time. It. Congrats yes. again, Jeff. That's really awesome. Thanks, everyone. Good to be with yeah, you thanks, tonight. Jeff. Yes, nice thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jeff. We have a uh, action-packed show. We got to keep it going here. Uh Brian, what's next? All right. I'll, uh, I am thrilled to have this next individual. Um, we've uh, talked about him several times throughout the, uh, the the course of this um, this show's history. We were blessed to have our first ever, I think, home game. First, his soccer club at the or soccer team at the time. I remember there uh, uh, having a great time yelling at some of his players. It's kind of hilarious, but uh, uh, it's a my honor and a privilege to uh, to welcome in one of our newest contributors to Cincinnati Soccer Talk, Andy Fleming, former head coach at uh, Xavier University. Nick Haglin's former head coach, as well as now being, a, I think, ESPN commentator. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But welcome to the show, Andy Fleming. How are you doing, sir? I've never used this mechanism for a podcast, so I initially went on and saw Brian and thought I was Brian. And for half a second, I'm like, wait a minute, what's that background? I realized that I, I wasn't you. So that, that was an eye opener. And then my other one is don't do a podcast when your wife is traveling for work and you have four young kids on a school night. Oh, yeah, podcast. you'll learn that real quick. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll deal with that later. But uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Great work that you do. Obviously, a lot to talk about. Excitement at all time high. My timing couldn't have been better. Yeah, so we're very excited to have uh, Coach Fleming in here uh, to join us. Uh, he's going to be kind of taking, you know, every every other week, or we're going to find times throughout the year to bring him on for special segments to kind of address the club and, and kind of what he sees as a, as a former head coach, former CEO, we'll ca- kind of call it a, a big picture view. So a little bit different than what you see on Talking Tactics with Coach Goff and Justin Hoyt. So very excited to have, have Coach here. But we're going to kind of introduce Coach today, kind of, get his thoughts a little bit uh, later on the club, but let's talk about your history, Andy, and, and what you did, you know, for this, the city and its soccer history. I mean, you know, we all know Nick Hagelin was there, uh, but you also did some outstanding charity work with, with Devin's game and buddy walk, things like that. Uh, but you were a, a mainstay over a hundred wins at Xavier. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, you know, your history. Well, I, uh... I first want to thank you guys because the day I stepped aside, someone sent me the tweet you put up and it said legendary Xavier coach. And I looked at that word for a good minute and I think it's an overused word, particularly by millennials, but um, I don't think I'm a legend, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. it certainly, it, it meant something to me. Um, that's the first thing. And then a, a former player from UC came up to me in the neighborhood a couple weeks ago, drove by and just pulled over and said, Hey, thanks. You changed soccer in the city. And when I got here, it was kind of quiet. There really wasn't a lot going on. There was really no professional outlet. The two college programs were down. And what we were able to do for, you know, a five or six-year span, particularly from 2010 to 2017, handing off the torch to FC, I thought was great. Um, And we did a lot, right? I mean, we went to four NCAA tournaments, Sweet 16, 10 wins against top 10 teams. One year, we knocked off the number one team, number two team in the country. Two conference championships, four conference championship games, two first-round draft picks. Uh, There was a lot there. And what's funny about what we did, I was thinking about it today. The year before we had two wins. The year before that, we had three wins. So I took over and we actually hit the ground running and had instant success. Kind of like what you're seeing here where the people who didn't do as well, the core nucleus of guys with FC actually in a new environment, new leadership with some reinforcements added, were able to have great success. So I found that to be something I'm really proud of. Um, and then obviously we led the country in fewest yellow cards, 588 college teams. One year we had four yellow cards in 23 games and made the second round and went to, um, you know, uh, we're number eight in the country. So I'm proud of that. And then another year we had the top t- team GPA in division one. So when I talked about being a combination of Notre Dame football and probably Michigan state basketball, we did that, but there's a lot of husbands and fathers and employees out there. And that's what I promised to develop. And I'm pretty proud about that, but, um, it was really cool thinking about it today and I it took me a couple months to reflect on it but 
That was pro- and then obviously, like you said, the stuff with Devin. Devin came into my life in 2011, unbeknownst to me. And um, what a great city for it! What a slam dunk! And then to see 400 people from Xavier Athletics every year in Marymount in my neighborhood, walking around, and to see people recognizing Devin and Devin's game, and to play Notre Dame and Akron and some other teams, and have over 3,000 people. Um, I was more than a coach at Xavier. I feel like I was an ambassador. I feel like I was an asset on campus. And uh, I look back now very fondly and at peace. And I'm empty because I gave everything I have. I'm very full because I feel like I fulfilled everything I wanted to do there. For sure. Now tell us a little bit about what you're doing. I know people have turned on the the college games and seen you on TV lately. Done a little bit of that. Not as much as I'd like. I think I'm two games away from really getting the hang of it and being good at it. Um, Kept my summer camps in the summer, helped with some high school teams, getting them ready around here in the summer. Uh, did a defenders camp with Nick over the summer, which was great. Sold it out in like three days. Uh, you know, Nick around here was slam dunk. But the thing that I'm really doing that's, you know, really taken off that is my full-time job is I started becoming an agent and kind of a headhunter and kind of wow. a family advisor for recruits. So Andy Fleming Recruiting has been in for a year and a half. We have 50 clients from 17 states. Last year, we committed 40 kids, ACC, wow. uh, Virginia, Wake Forest, three to Indiana, Kentucky, um, you know, Penn, but we also have WashU, St. Louis, Kenyon, Amherst, schools like that. And, um, you know, just finding guys at tournaments that I think are good players, signing them on to work with me. And like I said, either being their agent, kind of being a headhunter and advising their family on the um, ebbs and flows of recruiting. Reminds me a little bit about having a team because I call these kids once a month. I've been calling high school age kids my whole life, mentoring a little bit, uh, the challenge of getting them to go somewhere, networking with my former colleagues and putting a team together. I do feel like I'm in the game still, still traveling around and uh, very much a lot easier than coaching, working for myself, working my own hours and really more connected to my family and have more inner peace than I've ever had and really, really happier than I've ever been. Yeah. We've talked to a lot of former soccer people, players, coaches over the years. And I think that's the tough thing. What you've done is the, is the tough thing to switch um, from either playing professional soccer or coaching professional soccer and then finding that next thing, especially in the industry that, as we all know, can be small. It can be big at times, but it can also shrink on you. And so um, that's good to hear that you're already doing that. Hey, as far as Cincinnati Soccer Talk goes, we want to um, introduce you to the to the fan base, uh, everybody listening, everybody that's going to the thousands of people that will listen on the podcast uh, this week. What do you hope to bring to the show and, uh, and uh, Cincinnati in the future? It's funny because every once in a while you have a a guy like maybe a Tommy G come on and he knows all the stats. He knows all the league. He knows all the players. And then other guys talk tactics. Um, I know that, but I'm more into like, what, what is Pat Noonan thinking right now? What's the pulse of the team? What's the mood? A good leader peaks around corners. What's coming up around here. Uh, You have that 10 day layoff coming out. What's that going to be designed? Uh, What's Wednesday going to feel like what's going on in the locker room? Uh, fortunate enough living in Marymount, Chris Albright lives behind me. Jeff Lernowitz lives <laughs> the end of my street. Hunter Freeman is two streets over. And then you got <laughs> Noonan and Arena down the street. So I see these guys a lot um, in their ear a lot. I always tell Chris I'm his annoying, unsolicited uh, consultant from the neighborhood. Uh, and, you know, but it has given me a team to follow. And I do have a pretty good idea of what goes on there from 6,000 feet, but also from six feet away. And really, when there's a game, I don't think everybody knows what goes into it. And I don't think people understand the psychological and people management part of it and all the dimensions of managing different emotions over really 10 months. It's quite a, it's quite a marathon this season. So I'll open with a question real quick. Okay. Sure. Because obviously the hot topic now that they've won the supporter shield, there's that point record, the points record that's out there with three games to go. Right. And if you were the coach, what would you be doing? Would you be rotating? Would you be, focusing more on MLS cup, trying to get guys rested, or you, you know, you could really set some history with the, you know, a points record. And I think you can do both. Uh, frankly, I, I can't think of a better scenario. You have a Red Bull team on Wednesday at home. So you don't have a whole week. I'm sure the guys were happy Saturday and, you know, a little loose, but like you got to get back to work on Monday and it's a home game with the shield against a team that if your fists aren't up right away, they'll be up after 10 minutes with Red Bull. So I think that takes care of itself. Then you look to Miami. Well, we owe Miami a game. We want to get them out of the playoffs. We want to win there. And then you get a 10-day break. So I think, frankly, you get a home game with the Shield. You go to Miami, who you, 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 you've been thinking about that for weeks. And then that 10-day you know, break, if it's rolling, you go with it. If it's broken, you reset it. Get a little bit of training camp type stuff in there, basic stuff. Work on kind of 
We're down a goal this. We're going to bunker in if we're up a goal, different scenarios, and you can really get some fitness in. And I think this veteran team, you know, Chris was saying, he's like, oh, Beam's not going to let this team take its foot off the pedal. And I think you're going to see no letdown. But for Wednesday, I think you rotate a little. I think you go for it on Saturday. But if they had 10 days off, I'd be worried. If they had, you know, whatever, I think it's very well set up as far as a opponent that they have a little bit of animosity towards at home with the Shield, then Miami, then 10 days. And I feel bad for these teams that, you know, are out of contention that have to take 10 days off and play one game. I was talking to Nick about that today. There's some really funny lack of flow to the MLS season this year. Funny is not the word I would use, but I think it's dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, been, especially yeah, right. if you're Toronto, right? If you're somebody like them, it's like seriously. No, yeah, that's, I think a story broke today. Uh, a player uh, somewhere, I can't remember what which player it was in the league, but complaining about the number of games and said that they're going to have to take it up as an issue. It was Andre Probably Blake the, of the yeah, Philadelphia Andre, Union. That's right, and he's a, and he's a keeper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get tired standing there. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So you, you talked a little bit about uh, how to handle. Uh, so you're going all out Wednesday in front of the home crowd. Uh, I'm managing it. I'm definitely rotating, guys. I think it's a great opportunity. I think, you know, you balance your lineup. Mm -hmm. Maybe you start three non-reserves and then you bring three guys on at halftime. And that way you're not taking five starters out and have five, you know, reserves in. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think some of those guys like Lucho and Barry L, man, they're soldiers. I mean, the, the amount of load they, they handle and they come back every night and they play and they play both sides of the ball. I think it's going to be hard to get Lucho off the field, but I think yeah. there is some, you, you will see, put it this way. You will see some approach from them, I believe on Wednesday, as far as rotating. And then Saturday, I think is based off of Wednesday a little, but um, no, I think it's great to have a game in two days because you really don't have time to, you know, sign any autographs or read your press clippings. I do think being from Boston, I'll, I'll throw a little shade in here. Like, you know, if you're not good, they run you out of town. If you lose a game, people are, you know, they're a little brash. I think here you can kind of, there's a little too much adulation sometimes. And I do worry about this city and how they, you know, kind of fluff it up a little bit. And I won't, I won't make sure these guys don't get too much into that because this, uh, this place is very forgiving, not unforgiving. And they should be forgiving now. But I was worried about if we had a lot of time off, how would those guys handle that? Hmm. Keep saying we like I'm part of the team, but this is my <laughs> team now. This is who I follow, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no. the, the, other, the other thing you brought up with Andre Blake, though, like, you know, Chris said yesterday, I saw him, he's like, D people don't understand how long of a road this is. Like, my son and I went to training in February. You know, we had winter jackets on. And the other day, I'm like, man, that's the same season. You forget. And yeah. the, the regular season championship, ML everybody talks about MLS Cup, but, like, this is harder to do. Some colleges, you get a bonus if you win the regular season championship, like men's basketball. You don't get a bonus if you win the postseason. And that's because this is a marathon, and every week everybody's trying to do the same thing. And I don't think people understand, like, hey, we got home at 2 in the morning on uh, Sunday morning. We had to play on Tuesday. They had that stretch of, like, four straight Wednesday, Saturdays. Everybody's doing it, but when you have everybody coming after you, it's not easy to do. These people are human beings, not machines. But this is a long road, and I think that's why you saw the the celebration you did because there actually is some type of emotional release because it is a marathon. It's in arguably the longest season in the world if you look at it a certain way. Yeah, I launched a full on debate uh, on on what's more important, <laughs> Cup or Shield, and obviously Cincinnati fans might be a little biased at the moment. I know uh, uh, several of us here are pro Shield, and then but but the fact is it's a it's an American uh, sport tradition to have playoffs, and so they're going to have to. You're right, they're going to have to gear up, they're going to have to get ready because if you want full credit, you got to win them both. To be honest with you, it's hard to do, really hard to do. Sure it is. So. All right, well we appreciate you being on, Andy. I think I think we still have a. Uh, Brian stuffed this show full of all kinds of action and guests. And so, Brian, do you got anything before we uh, head out? Well, I know we we talked about a lot tonight, but um, you know, before we talk to you again, what is your kind of your your SWOT analysis? You know, strengths, weakness, opportunities, threats that we need to look at over the last stretch of these of uh, these matches. I think the strengths obviously are the the offensive firepower. If you look at it in the last eighteen games, so I equated to a college season. They've scored two goals 13 times. They've scored three goals eight times, so they can outscore opponents. I think TQL is a strength. I think the mentality is great. I think there's certainly an edge to this team and, and senior leadership that will uh, serve them well. So uh, I think that, and then they can come from behind. Um, one of their weaknesses, not to get ahead, is they concede early, but I think they always think they can come back, which is great. But in a knockout playoff team that's done well, that you know probably has more juice in the belief tank, that can be a weakness at time. But I think overall the offensive firepower – if you think back two or three years ago, like this is this isn't something we never would have dreamt of. <laughs> right. 
absolutely. Well, uh, uh, sorry, can I continue yeah, on? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Quick? No, I think weakness wise, it, it, you know, uh, the discipline a little bit, like I worry about cards. That's been a problem all year. And I think the continuity in the back line has hurt a little bit from cards. Uh, outscoring people is a strength, but also I still think they can tighten up defensively. Uh, lead the league in shutouts, which is funny, but only four shutouts in their last 18 games. So I do think, can you win a one nothing game? Uh, and then certainly there's some tactical things with, you know, if a team plays three up top, do they have their wing backs attached to the back line? Won't get into that. But I just think really – some of these cards, you know, are fixable and avoidable. And I think that's something I worry about, particularly um, with mascara, you know what I mean, in the back line, because that's a little thin and, and that's something to keep your eye on. But they do reset in the playoffs. Yeah. 19 yeah, wins, thinking, 13 okay. of those are one goal games. Yeah. Yeah. And Maybe. they come from behind a lot. You know, the other thing um, real quick is, you know, I think set pieces have gotten better. I think they have the dead ball taker now, Barry L with the goal recently. I think they get size and service. I think that's an opportunity. But one thing I do want to talk about real quick, Pat Noonan has a card in his back pocket that no one else has. I don't know if he's going to play it. I don't know if he's going to play it to the full extent. It is there, though, and that's Mr. Bruce Arena, who is an Eastern Conference coach, the oh. winningest coach in the history of American soccer. Probably wouldn't mind seeing his son's team win. Hey, Dad, what do you think? Now you can really tell me what you think. You know what I mean? You're kind of not keeping your cards here. I'd be remiss to say, Bruce, can you watch a couple of these games and let us know what you think? Is he going to come into town? And I just think that's a weapon that the other day I was cutting my grass. That's where I had my great thoughts. And I thought, geez, I wonder if that gets utilized. And that's something worth considering. If, if it is utilized, you won't hear about it, Andy. Right. That's true. <laughs> well, it's Bruce. You might hear about it. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Apparently, Pat and Bruce are also good friends. So it's not just yeah, Kenny. Sure. Right? sure. So, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I national team in LA. Yeah, I think being friends with Bruce has been a smart idea the last 15 years in American soccer. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I and I sure. think the, the, the key guys for me are um, Murph and Kubo and Bazi. Well, what about so and so? Well, their core is going to show up. You know what I mean. But if we are down a guy in the back, or if Murph's a starter now, does he go with it? Does he show up? I think Kubo is immensely talented, very versatile. Perhaps in my eyes, he should be the third six. If a team sits in in a deep block and they challenge our two sixes to break him down, I put Kubo at six. And I think Baji is an awesome third forward for MLS. It just speaks volumes of the depth we have. But I think lately, you know, Bapenz has got his form. The two goals for Brandon the other night might be the two most important goals of the year. But if you got to go with Baji to lock a game down or somebody gets hurt, I think he's back and he uh, has great form. And I think he's capable of, of scoring big goals as well. Awesome. That is awesome analysis, but don't, don't go too hard because we're going to need you. We're going to need you back on the show. We're going to need, we're going to need your break and breaking down, especially after Wednesday. And we got Miami and Messi and all this stuff coming up. So it's going to be action packed. And uh, there's a lot to talk about, especially as we head to the playoffs. Thanks for being on. Thanks for agreeing to come on a whole bunch more. And we, uh, we think you're going to be a huge asset. And I, th yeah. I know our listeners are already probably like, yes, yes. Bring this guy back a whole lot more. So Thanks for coming. I'm going to wear a wig next week, so there's not as much uh, glare. <laughs> like I, I, mine's falling out. Maybe wear a hat. Day. I coach. I coached the U6 game tonight. I think I lost half my hair coaching that. So, oh. tell you right, what. Well, well thanks, thanks, coach, guys. man. Appreciate Thank you so on. much. Have a good night. Thank you, coach. Yeah. All right. He's All right. Thanks, man. Yep. Thanks. Stay tuned. We still have uh, Andy Sherman uh, of DI coming on uh, to show us. You, you heard. Oh, yeah. You you heard um, Jeff Birding talk about it. We have uh, – there's a whole system around this shield, and so real, we're going to have uh, David on here in a bit to talk about that. Before we do it, though, that's, that last segment was sponsored by Beyond Exercise. They are opening a new facility in Madisonville, 6,500-square-foot facility, and they've already um, trained with Nick Hagelin, Brandon Vasquez, to help pilot a new uh, ACL prevention program. And so once that facility is open, that thing's going to launch, and uh, if you are – if you play league soccer or you're just you're out there getting into it, you got kids that are playing. This is going to be a huge thing that you will want to follow up on. And, and again, uh, piloted by Hagland and Vasquez. So check them out beyond exercise. Uh, as soon as that's open, we will be uh, promoting it. All right. Before we get into uh, do you want to do you want to go back to segment one, Brian, or do you want to go just dive right? Uh, in? Let's dive down it. Let's let's go to you want to go to Dave and then we'll yeah. go into that. Yeah, let's just do that. All right, so we'll welcome in the president of DN and Stad, and also an independent supporter council board member here to talk with us about the Supporters Shield. How are you, David? I'm doing pretty well. Can you guys hear me okay? 
Yep. We can hear you great. Perfect. All right. I'm doing really well. I mean, uh, a little bit tired, but uh, it's been it's been a whirlwind of a, of the last uh, two weeks or so for us, as you can imagine. All right. I think I think a lot of fans read the article in the Inquirer. Uh, great job, by the way, breaking down um, a lot of this Shield story with uh, with Pat, and we appreciate uh, both of you working together on that story. But we, we still have questions. We still have questions. First, can you let sure. um, all of the fans listening uh, live and tomorrow on the podcast, what is the history of the Shield, and uh, and how, why does it matter? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for the kind words. You know, I, I love talking with Pat and he was a great storyteller. So it, it was really easy to just talk to him and let him put all that on paper. And I think he did a great job explaining that. Um, the Supporter Shield was first awarded in uh, 1997, but it was awarded um, to the previous year's winner, which was the Tampa Bay Mutiny, uh, 1996. Um, so if you look at the top of the Supporter Shield, when it does make its public appearances, you'll see that. Um, but it was really a mechanism to show around the league that their supporters, uh, you know, had invested themselves in time and they wanted to share that with the other supporters, right? And so they created this this award for those that won won the league. Um, and it was the best regular season uh, record by the end of the season, which um, in the previous years, you would play every team multiple times, but that's kind of changed as the league expanded and grew. Awesome. And so this shield, I, I, is it really that heavy? Is it like, it, I heard it like it was like, it is. Something. The shipped package was over 70 pounds. Uh, if I remember the label correctly, it's it's a very large case. Um, it came in a very large safe case um, and it weighs probably 55 pounds on its own. It doesn't have any handles, which makes it a little bit of a challenge to hold, um, wow. as you can imagine. Um, but I'm sure the players will, will do just fine. Um, but it is it is pretty hefty. Um, it is it is an actual flat surface, right? So it's, it's pretty neat. Um, we will get we don't have the engravings yet of course that's still in process but in the next few months we'll start to get those items to make it ours right so right now it's, it's our shield but it doesn't have our our name on it just yet so the shield is in town though already it is in town actually i can i can uh, i can confirm that it is is actually in my house currently <laughs> it is it is in my front my front room right now in my now house. we know why yes. the camera's off <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, there's, unfortunately, we're doing no public viewings until after the team hoist it in the stadium. That was a, an agreement that the three ISC um, Cincinnati SGs decided to to do, which we thought was appropriate. Um, we got okay. a comment in the chats from uh, Jay. He wants to know how much the insurance policy. It does have to be insured. We won't make you answer that, but it does have to be insured, though, right? It does have to be insured. Um, we're, we're working through kind of that mechanism right now. Um, I can tell you that it's not as significant as you would expect. Um, it, is, it is a decent chunk, um, but we're not talking about the Lombardi Trophy or the Stanley <laughs> Cup here, right? Or the, or the Web Ellis Cup if you're uh, following the Rugby World Cup right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really fascinating because typically there, there isn't a, a bunch of supporters groups involved. So LAFC was a bit of a unique story, but there's three groups that will equally share in its administration and care. Um, so every day, once it goes home, it will go home with the board member of one of those three SGs. So we actually have to create a process to manage it, work with the other groups, work with the non ISC group so they can participate and share in that as well, which is, is currently ongoing. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of unknown territory for us in the club and it's been, it's been moving really fast, but I, I think we're starting to get to a good place. Um, we're working on some, some SG agnostic, um, merchandise that will, um, put out soon. Um, if, for those of you that aren't familiar, the Supporter Shield merchandise is very specific to the supporters groups and the club can only make one item, which was the shirt that they put in their store and are uh, re-adding in the stadium store uh, this Wednesday. Um, but those proceeds go to charity and any merchandise that we make as a joint uh, threesome of, of, of SGs, um, we chose uh, Top Soccer actually as our as our charity to do joint items. But these are items that will be SG agnostic that we can share with all the supporters groups that, you know, anybody can buy any of these things. But we wanted to say, hey, this is this is a supporters group stuff. This isn't a DI thing or a pride thing or a hanger thing, right? This is all of us. We did this together, uh, even if they're not ISC members. So we will also see each individual SG of the three, pride, hanger, and DI, put out their own uh, items in the coming weeks and months. Um, but right now we want to focus on the group as a whole. And uh, you'll be seeing some merchandise out there in the next few days, hopefully. Um, we're we're wow. just kind of working through the logistics of that. So keep keep uh, keep that in mind, and you'll actually be reaching out uh, to the supporters groups to purchase those. Um, and we'll communicate all that as as time allows. So 
So Hang tight. Jay, Jay Yates asks, uh, do we get a replica for our trophy case uh, once we have to send it somewhere? <clears throat> I don't think so. I don't know to be sure, but I've never seen another version of this trophy. Like this one has got scratches on it and um, the medallion can be changed out if it's damaged um, and things like that. So it, it is, it is the functional trophy. And I don't know, actually, that's a great question. Yeah. Michael De below said, said a banner hanging. That, that seems the most logical to me. I would think. Yeah. That's what, that's what I've seen other clubs do um, for sure. But I haven't seen their trophy cases to, to confirm or deny that they don't, but uh, yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I, I know some Philly Union folks who who made replica shields. I don't know how correct or accurate they were, but I I at least know that they they had they done they did that. I can't even talk to me. They did that a couple years ago when they won the shield. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's, that's cool. They, they took a vinyl wrapper over a Captain America. Th- right. Uh, I'm not shield, saying it's so like I'm not, I'm not saying it's like great. I'm just saying they did it. So, that's that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you you guys were talking about like public uh, opportunities. Um, yes. Well, do you expect the you know the shield to be at like supporters events in the off season? And also, Absolutely. can I get on this? Can I get on the schedule right now for our preseason event at Greenworks with uh, our Norden <laughs> buddies? Can we get that uh, taken care of? You uh, t- two two answers for you. Number one is yes. Absolutely, we will be sharing this with with um, you know with supporters groups players, coaches, staff, you know, people that are involved that want to be involved, right? We've created an online forum, which we'll share uh, here soon um, with the supporter groups that will allow for signups, right? We want to prioritize charity events. Um, The main thing is that it's kind of like the Stanley Cup. We always have to have one member uh, with it. So even if the players are partying within the locker room tomorrow, someone will be sitting in the bowels of the stadium waiting for it to take it home. Um, So we're kind of of going through that uh, process now. But yes, it will um, we are working through some logistics for the next home match potentially. Um, don't quote me on that yet. We're still we're still not sure how it's going to work, um, but we will definitely have events for people to be able to come and be involved. And in. uh, each group is going to do their own things. End of season parties, the Shield will will absolutely be at those as well, right? As long as we follow the proper protocols and things like that. So it's it's just all moving so fast right now. We we can't solve all the problems and ask and answer all the questions yet. You know what I mean? Like we don't even right. know what the answers are. So right. But they but yes, definitely we want to share it. We want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be a part of it. We want to make sure it's equitable and mm-hmm. and all those things, right? So that's ongoing discussion of how we can do that without you know without hurting feelings and all that. So, but the the main priority will be with supporters groups and obviously charity tied events is a big driver of these of the mechanism, right? This the shield profits from any merchandise we'd sell, for example, 50% goes to charity off the top. 25% goes to IFC for administration because it's a nonprofit. And then 25% comes to the supporters group that sells the item or that's part of the agreement. Um, so it's a, it's a really neat item to where we can really go crazy and sell things that the club can't necessarily sell. Like that really drives the supporters culture um forward like people can actually be a part of it and see how how critical it is to 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 the to the match day experience and to the team right it's not it's not just about us but we can be a vehicle um to to help expand that and obviously charity work falls right into our wheelhouse right all of the sgs do charity work um so this is this is a great testament to that yeah i think that's the coolest thing and, and some of us like to like to think we know a lot about American soccer. And I, I know a lot about USL and a lot about Major League Soccer. And for some reason, this has totally slipped my radar. And I had no idea that the supporters took this much ownership, this much control over it, so much so that the club even has to come to you guys, right? And say, hey, we have an event in the West End. We would really like the Shield to show up. And then and then uh, you guys will, of course, make that happen. But it's, it, it, yeah. it's truly unique. Is there any other sport with anything like this? Uh, I don't think that there is. Um, I think this is, I think that the trophy is a representation of, of European soccer or any, any other soccer league, right? That, that you are the champion of the regular season, you get the trophy. Um, so I think that part is not abnormal. I think what's so abnormal is that it's, you know, it's not a bunch of executives in suits hauling it around with lawyers. It's, it's a bunch of volunteers managing it across the, the North American soccer landscape, right? Which is pretty neat. You know, I've I've met some of the board members of the Supporter Shield Foundation um, through working with them in ISC because I'm on, as you mentioned, I'm on the board at ISC as a way travel person. Um, So, you know, it's it's really it's really humbling. Like that's the best way I can explain it. It's so cool because all these other people around you are like, hey, we we're doing the same work you're doing in our city, and congratulations. And that's really 
that's a big deal to, to, to a lot of us because as you know, this is, this is all, this is all volunteer work. All those banners you see in the stadium, all the TIFOs, uh, everything is paid for and done through supporters efforts, right? Through various funding mechanisms or things that we're doing, selling merchandise, um, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. This is all volunteer work. This is all volunteer labor going into this, right? So that's a big testament that with, when you, when you win something that there's so much recognition around the league that, you know, the players in the field, they put in the hard work on the field and they, they took care of business, but we were there along the way, you know, that's really a cool feeling. Yeah. Well, uh, some of us along, along the way in the three wooden spoon era as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we were, we were just talking to Jeff Birding earlier in the show about, about the good and the bad of it. And so you've, you've been there, you've seen it all. So I kind of want you to take off your heavy shield. You put, you know, put your bodyguard, uh, uh, on <laughs> side, uh, you know, all the free work you're doing on, on that front, <laughs> you, you, uh-huh. probably didn't, you probably didn't know you're going to spend your whole off season being a bodyguard, right? But <laughs> no, I, I didn't. And, you know, I, I joked with Pat that if the club says, you know, we want to do a, a black tie event, like, well, I don't, I don't own the tuck. So I guess I got to go get one or somebody, <laughs> hopefully somebody else does. Cause I don't have that. Right. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun, right? We're, we're creating a process so that we can, we can include all these groups and you know, building a calendar. So we have coverage for all the events, right? Someone may, like one of the players may want to bring this shield with their kids to school, right? Of course, we'd love to be a part of that. How do we do that? Right. Give us as much visibility as we can so we can plan it and make it right. Mm. Uh, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're about. We want to share this with the community. Like this is, this is, this isn't just for us as supporters. Like, this is for the community too. Like we're going to, we're going to do some cool charity work through this. And I'm very, very proud of that. Awesome. How special is tomorrow? This is where I was getting at. Uh, how special is tomorrow to you? You know, someone who's been through the thick and the thin. Uh, this is just, you know, fans to fan here. Um, you know, you're, you're finally going to see your club host a trophy again. It's been a while since USL. Yeah, I, I was there when uh, when we clinched in 20, was that 2018, 2017? 2018. Yeah, 2018. And that was that was incredible because we really just kind of the same situation. We just kind of ran away with the league. Like we just out muscled everybody. And that was really cool. And we earned and we enjoyed the hell out of that. Um, it was a little bit different. Like we didn't know what to expect, but now I think we can kind of have, we have some runway. We've seen other clubs hand off the supporter shield. We understand the importance of it. Right. So this is, this is really cool. And we as supporters will be handing it to the club, to the, excuse me, to the players. And that is something we, I just, I can't even fathom. I can't replicate. I've never experienced anything like that. Right. So you'll see a, a member of each SG involved in handing off the supporter shield, um, which is a, is a big deal, right? So we want to make sure that we share that moment with all the other groups because they were there along the way, you know, so it's, 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 I can't even put words to it yet. Um, you know, I, I'm very, I'm very excited. Like it, it'll be, it'll be a big party. It's a bummer. It's on a Wednesday, but I feel like a lot of Cincinnati companies are going to have folks taken off on Thursday morning, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone who has tickets is going to be there Wednesday. It might feel like a Saturday, to be honest with you. I'm I'm very excited, and I would say to those that want to be involved and learn more that don't maybe participate with supporters groups, that's that's totally okay. But if you want to learn more, um, you can meet us at our various bars around over the Rhine uh, before the match. Um, Still House for DI and Hangar, uh, Pride at Northern Row. Um, Norden, I can't think of the bar they're at. Um, Symphony. Um, so, like, go go visit the, uh, the excuse me the brigade at uh, a task, right? Go go visit these groups. Go talk to them. Mm-hmm. Get involved. You know, find a group that fits you. And you know, that's all I can say. Like, th- this is where you want to learn more. Um, this is this is, uh, this is a great opportunity to do so. And we're going to do some really cool stuff that we just haven't figured out yet. Um, and we're really excited. And there's some some cool plans in the works uh, for some other things, merchandise wise. And yeah, I think we're just going to have a lot of fun with it, yeah. and uh, it's it's a it's an unreal experience. And we're we're actually this is I'm proud to say this we are actually working to document this process in its entirety because it doesn't really exist on paper that we've found, um, and we want to you know add something valuable to the process too. And that's something that we're we're gonna we're gonna work towards is documenting this process, getting it visible so that other groups when they get it they're not you know running Nobody around with it. Right? Nobody else is winning it. It's exactly. Crazy. Yeah. So for the next decade, when we don't give it to anybody else, <laughs> um, the process, the process on paper will look really great. Um, but no, that's our, that's our collective goal too, right? We want to, we want to give it, we don't just want to party. I mean, we do, but we want to give this shield something. We want to give something back to that too. Right. And our, our part is let's document this process. Let's, let's, uh, let's make it truly, you know, an equitable supporters thing. Like let's, let's drive this forward. 
So I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited. The, the year ahead is going to be really cool. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff. So stay tuned to your supporters group uh, channels and chats. And if you don't already uh, have a supporters group membership, they are uh, typically $20 uh, for a season. You get a scarf usually with it. Um, and so I highly recommend you investigate them and see which one fits your, fits your, uh, fits your style, I guess I'll say. <laughs> can I, can I ask for a friend who doesn't live in Cincinnati? that's not in a supporters group. What if you want to buy merchandise? Will that be something you'll open up to folks who who are fans that maybe don't live in the Queen City area? Absolutely. Absolutely. Our items are going to be sold online. There's no, you know, we will maybe do some some specific member merchandise. Friend, <laughs> yeah, no, no. That's, that's a great. There's the there will be the USPS. <laughs> there will definitely be um, there will definitely be online items sold. Um, there may be things that we gear towards members only, but I don't know what any of that looks like yet. We haven't even decided what we're going to make. Like it's just all going so fast. But yes, all the things that we make um, will be available to the public, um, and we may do like one specific merchandise item for our group for DI, for example. We may make one item just for our members for this season because it's a special thing. Uh, we want to do something really unique. So. Some, some things like that, but yeah, everything pretty much will be available to the public. You'll just need to go on to our to our collective SG's uh, websites, and uh, we'll share all that out once we have that awesome. hammered out. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, man. Uh, we're very excited to, yes, thank you. to see what you guys do, and uh, it's going to be a fun uh, next year. Or so, getting to uh, check that out. No bus busk burgers or anything like that off the shield. Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Thanks, David. Five I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much for the time. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, that's David Sherman of uh, DN and Stutt and also the uh, Supporters Council. We appreciate him stopping by, giving us a heads up on what's going on with the Shield. And, man, you know, Cincinnati supporters are so creative. You see these TIFOs. You see the amazing banners they put up every week. And uh, the people that have dumped their heart and soul into uh, all of this stuff to make the team cool. I can't wait to see what they put out. And you know what? Uh, all of us listening, we're probably going to go broke because by the time we get done buying playoff seat tickets and and really cool shield merchandise, and I, I hope I hope they make out like bandits. I hope I hope they just sell stuff wild, and then there's three times as much smoke. Bill Bill they Bill shows up next season, and there's like a whole new drum set for him because that's how well <laughs> these shirts did. <laughs> More trumpets, right? Yeah. More trumpets. Uh, I, I do think that uh, we do owe it to the culture of the. Uh, soccer community though kind of to what dave said is create more policy so um you know eating a, a sky rosa is, is is acceptable for at least one person so i nominate uh i, I, I nominate chief war pick for that honor there you go. <laughs> nice all right well uh man this has been an absolute great show but i want to bring it back to us and um and get your guys' thoughts because, you know, for years and years, people have listened to uh, the three of you and the voices on this show. And so uh, we're, 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 it's been a tough few years. I mean, this show, Subes, you produced this show through some really rough stretches where we were just digging for any hope of optimism, any kind of, um, well, how do we talk about this loss again? And uh, so, <laughs> So let's just dive into that real quick. What does winning a supporter shield first place in major league soccer with three games to go? What does that mean to you? It's validation, right? I mean, as somebody who uh, I've been fortunate the last couple of years, even though I haven't been around CST, I've been uh, involved in, in the best soccer show who has a, a plethora of fans from among many different MLS fan bases. Right. And so it's always been man, FCC are so bad. FCC, just, just ragging on us, right? And so it's just validation. It's the to be able to look at those folks and say, yeah, it's ours. You know, <laughs> you're, you're not even close to, to what FCC did this year. That's and, and that's a big reason I want the points record. You know, I want to be able to rub it into everybody's faces. We went from being the laughing stock of the league for three consecutive years to the best team in the history of the damn league. So for me, yeah, I want that points record. So, and so, so yes, the, the word I'm looking for here, Boston, it, it's validation, right? This is what we, you know, when we were producing the show all those years, having to deal with the the losses, the the seven ones to Minnesota, you know, like those days are over, and that that's what's uh, really cool about about this. Even though, yeah, it the the runway was short, and they you know they they joined the league a little early, but it's here, and, and it. And, you know, it's validation. So pretty proud. 
Yeah, I remember those conversations. What's interesting is I never felt like it was about us. It was about how do we make this entertaining right. or a show people want to listen to. And we just felt like, oh, you know, it's going to be people at some at sometimes we thought people needed lifted up and at sometimes we felt like people needed to vent frustration. And so it was just trying to uh, answer the call for whoever might be listening on uh, Monday, Tuesday morning. And so I appreciate that. And I got really tired of starting the show off with. <sighs> <laughs> Not, we came up with 90 different ways to say we're bad yeah wow. yeah wow. but it was really it was it, it, it boiled down to i think soups one time said it the best uh during the stretch because i was like why are we doing this and uh and the answer was there's somebody who needs it on the drive to work on monday or tuesday and, yep. and they just want some kind of hope that that fc cincinnati will someday have a 2023 and, and uh, that they know that there, there are people who share in their misery. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's important. It really is important. All right, Bill. Joy now. Joy now. <laughs> <laughs> Joy now. Exactly. Yeah. What does this mean to you, Bill? Uh, well, I was going to add uh, to to what Sue said. I think uh, if, if we win our next two home games, don't we set a record for that as well? Most uh, wins at home? 50. I think oh. so. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So I think there's actually two potential records uh, within grasp. Interesting. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I guess I got a reputation over the years, uh, you know, people used to, uh, kind of look at me as an optimist or, or, or the guy who, <laughs> who, uh, you know, always, you were very positive, looked for the bright side. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, I know a hey. lot during, during, during all of this time, you know, when, when the frustration was there and, and. And the wooden spoons were coming in and, and, and people were, were just so frustrated. I know we had a lot of conversations about, you know, why did we do this? Why, why, you know, how could we have a team that's so bad? And, and, and I would say, you know, patience, patience, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, we're building the infrastructure now. We're putting in the stadium. We're putting in the training grounds. You know, wouldn't you rather have the infrastructure in place and a bad team so that you can have a good team later? And, and usually the answer was no. Uh, I want to win now. Um, at least that was what Subes always said. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty. Yeah. Patience is tough, but Bill. It is. It is tough. But, you know, here we are, right? And, and you know, we heard Birding earlier talk about, you know, we got all bright because we had this stuff here, right? We couldn't have we couldn't have pulled in uh, people like that um, to, to a city like Cincinnati without something, right? And and now we have the jewel of the stadium. We have the jewel of the training center. Um and and a little patience has paid off, and we've we've now got uh, the jewel of the the shield uh, to 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 show everybody and basically stuff it up there. Well, whatever. But um, <laughs> you know. But in the end, you're right. You know, the other thing, and, and this was another comment that that Jeff made at the end of his 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 uh, talk with us today, and and I feel the same way. Which is, I'm ton, I'm done. I'm tired of hearing about the wooden spoons. Right. So right now, right. This is so so unique to us that that everybody can't talk about how good we're doing without talking about how bad we did and and i'm ready for that to go away but i i will remain the voice of reason and the patient person to wait for that and i think give it a couple more years where expectations are that cincinnati will always be a team in the top of the table mm -hmm. not necessarily the top but in the top of the table then you know that goes away and people will forget uh, those first three years and it'll just be Cincinnati is one of the teams to beat. Mm -hmm. So and I'm looking yeah, forward to that. I liked what Jeff said because it, it is a story. It is a cool story, and I get why the national yeah. media grabs on it. We all felt it. So I, yeah. I think it's fine if a Cincinnati fan says, man, this feels good because it felt so bad. That's totally fine because you felt it. You lived in it. Now, national media writers just going to grab it because it's a cool headline. But you're right. I think FC Cincinnati has comes out of the gate. You've heard Jeff talk about how they're signing players. They want to be good again next year. I don't want to hear a dang thing about a wooden spoon next year because it doesn't matter anymore. So good, good take, Bill. Bry. Sure. Well, first off, uh, I got to enjoy that moment seeing that game and and seeing the celebrations with my son, uh, who's you know Brian, little Brian. Everybody knows uh, he was sick as a dog, but he wanted to stay up. Saturday, so we we stayed up and he powered through it with some uh, medicine in him, and it just have that moment, man. It's it's about it's, it's about the kids, and and now he can say he saw, you know, 
FCC wins win a trophy, just kind of like what I say. Hey, the Reds got the won a World Series in my lifetime, so at least you could say something like that. And second thing, uh, people know I'm a petty, bitter person when I get my buttons pushed. And screw you, Nashville. Screw <laughs> you. We're better than you. You haven't won a damn thing. We are better. Screw you. Love you. Screw you. We did it before you. I had a total opposite uh, uh, experience on Saturday night. So I, I, I'll be the first to admit I had planned Saturday night. So I was going to watch the game on delay, DVR, whatever you want to call it on, on season pass. But about 940, my phone starts going berserk with Twitter mentions. First of all, I'm, I'm not on Twitter. I'm, I don't ever tweet. Like, what, what the heck? You know, why am I getting notifications? And that's how I realized, oh, they won. They just people thanking or congratulating me like I did anything. <laughs> like, oh, so we must have beat Toronto. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. Just sitting in some driveway, drinking beer, watching football with our buddies. And yeah, that's how I found out. Roman made it difficult, but we, we did it. Yeah. No. Can't wow. be doing that in the playoffs. All right, Boston. What about you, pal? Well, uh, Brian, I, I just, I'm taking a moment to fully appreciate, um, this year and everything it's brought. I think it, I think, you know, speaking of Bill's point, if you look at the success, it wasn't just uh, putting together a nice team in March. Uh, it was a team that was consistently built and added depth. I mean, just look at the switch from Brenner to Bapenza. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a really good trade. And there's no guarantee that those things work. Uh, you you could end up uh, you could end up with a, a starter a number ten and number sorry number nine that just falls apart on you and so I think uh, shout out to Noonan and Chris Albright for really putting together the pieces this year and then building the team around uh, players that it needed to be built around like Acosta to make it successful. So do we want to give any credit to Night Camp at all? Like there are some pieces. I mean, it's uh, I think Night Camp. Y'all. Yeah, Nightcamp brought in some good pieces. I think Nightcamp's Brian problem Acosta. was that he, he couldn't figure out how to make a full roster, right? right? And I think that comes down to some of that MLS experience stuff where if you don't understand the roster mechanisms, you buy a couple of pieces and then you run out of money or run out of cap space or whatever, and suddenly you're, yeah. you know, signing. Well, we'll leave names out, but you know, Vasquez was a was a Nightcamp oh. deal, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he rode the bench for two years. Let's not oh. talk about this. <laughs> I'm just saying he deserves a sliver. Yeah, okay. all right. All right. Hey, Alan Koch, Alan Koch got Haglin, man, and we haven't been right. able to replace Haglin. He's been a day-in, day-out guy, so there's there's plenty to be sure about. But uh, I, I, one thing I, I really have liked and loved really seeing all this is um, the amount of former players yeah, and former that's staff really cool. that have like acknowledged it. And, uh, that, that's, that's pretty special. Um, even, you know, Alan, I know, I know we had, uh, we've said a lot of things about Alan on here, but still he was part of the process and, uh, you can't forget all these people that, that did play this role. I mean, the, I, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, praise to be had on the guys that are here now. Um, but yeah, just a, an amazing. Mm-hmm. I always uh, say, Brian, that, you know, if, if you, look back with regrets, then you have to sort of feel like where you are is not a good place. But if you're happy with where you are, you can't really regret the past because it's what got you here. Mm. And, you know, I think every, every mistake we made, every, everything that we thought was a failure uh, uh, was a learning experience or it was the the piece that, that got us to where we are. So I, I don't, I don't think we did anything wrong. So people are, are wild. Like they're, they're, you know, Oh, it it took him so long to get good. Well, I look at the other way. Like we are in that same boat as Atlanta and NYCFC and FC Cincinnati. Those, those teams that got in expansion and won a league title trophy of some kind. I mean, you have Austin, Charlotte, Miami, who, you know, leaks cup, whatever we're calling MLS Nashville, LAFC did win, but then you got you know Minnesota United, Orlando, Montreal, Vancouver. Does San Jose won anything since they restarted? I, I don't know. So that's eight teams that have been around for longer than FC Cincinnati. They haven't won a league title of, of any kind yet. That's amazing. 
it is truly amazing yeah. what what we did this this season. And and it's hopefully going to get better contrary to you know Pat Noon's interview today. Uh, you know, we might like to think that's true, but it's 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 outstanding. I mean, I just giggled. I giggled for 10 minutes just like this happened. So yeah, absolutely phenomenal year. I'm I'm happy for all all of you guys. Still more to do. Uh, there's more yeah. to do. Yeah, we're we're sounding like it's over, but it's not over. There's a lot, and I think all of us are still going to want that cup. I mean, I give me like a week to process this after Wednesday celebrate party, and then I'm going to get it out of my system. I think the you players. Know, what's crazy to. is at no point because I knew we were playing Red Bulls on Wednesday. At no point did Frankie and I cross my mind until Jeff said something. <laughs> I swear to God, I, I have forgotten. I've about already him thought about so it. much. I completely oh, yeah. forgot he even played for Red Bulls. Yeah. Until he said something tonight, and by the way, that was freaking funny that he, he that was. I mean, that was outstanding. So yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's so obviously. Uh, Coach Fleming mentioned resting some guys. But man, you can't I, you can't lose when you're really lifting the shield, right? Like that that'd be such <laughs> yeah, a letdown. You, you gotta win. You gotta win. You gotta win. Yeah, I agree. You gotta win. I was thinking the same thing. We can rest some guys, but we have to win this one because it's a shield ceremony. You mm-hmm. don't want to do that on a loss. But I think we do have to rest mascara. Mascara's on yellow card watch, right? Yeah. So if he gets one more, he's, he's always out. on yellow card watch. Well, yeah, but we don't want him to miss Miami. <laughs> yeah, I would I think I'm we want mascara for Miami. Murphy is playing great, might as well. You know, yes, I, I think it's right Miazga, there. Murphy, and Haglin for this one. Yeah, Haglin got his rest last game, so there's there's plenty of reason to to rest Mascara. And Red Bulls can't score, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm looking forward to watching TQL Stadium boo the ever living crap out of Frankie Maya and show him why he should have stayed. I hope he stays out yeah. there for the shield ceremony. I, I, I think we can get. A, I could have raised that. Get a good chant there. You should have stayed here. You should have stayed here. <laughs> oh, that would Frankie be great. Amaya, you should have stayed here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're yeah, but if he had stayed, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. Oh, we mm-hmm. wouldn't, right? Let's be honest. So what we, we were build, we were building him into a six, right? I mean, he was kind of our that was part of the issue is he wanted to be a ten, and we were building him as a six. Mm-hmm. I'd take Obi over him a hundred billion times. I'm yeah, close. Yeah, no. exactly. I, it's it's I'd crazy. Take junior work. over him. Yeah. Yep. Hindsight's twenty twenty because I mean I'm, I remember at the time just feeling devastated because I was like we 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 were gonna give you everything kid and uh, to I walk was never away. devastated I guess I was just more disappointed yeah I was with you Subes it was like you know it was he was one of the the shining moments for the team he was doing well he had the right mm-hmm. you know sort of blue collar hardworking uh, feel on the field and and you know we were willing to build some structure around him and he didn't didn't see the value in that. And I think that was short-sighted on his part. Well, uh, I've seen a lot of players sending out their tweets uh, this week and uh, Bupenza, I think said it best and said, good things come to those that work hard and and push for things. And so Frankie might might get to feel that this week uh, a little bit when he uh, sees his form. Can we eliminate them from the postseason on Wednesday or no? It's it's a miracle if they make the postseason. But I mean, would this be like, could we officially eliminate them on Wednesday with a win? No, we can't, Brian. Okay, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not All sure right. we want to either. Yeah, well, well that's uh, a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm uh, in the back of my mind. I'm just thinking, I'm like, guys, a draw is not bad. <laughs> if we're afraid of Miami, we really need to beat Miami, though. Yeah. I'll, I I want to see us play Miami next week. That's really all I care about, and then that'll, yeah. that'll gauge that'll gauge what I think after that. But I know this I isn't think, a normal show. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Bill. No, I was just saying, I think I think Miami, even if we beat them, if they win the other three, I think it's probably enough. Yeah. Normally we talk about the game. We didn't get into that. We we'll we'll we'll, we'll circle back uh, next week uh, with with all the the usual soccer stuff. But I hope you enjoyed this special so show of Cincinnati Soccer Talk. With lots of guests, lots of great co-hosts here. And um, if you haven't checked it out, real quick, I want to give a shout out to our Growler Cup, which is in playoff mode right now. And uh, those of you that are subscribers and uh, are on our Patreon page, the link is up. You can go ahead and get your picks in now for the New York Red Bull game and stay ahead of that Growler Cup playoff race. And a shout out to everyone that does support us. I can't read all the names because we are way late already, but I do want to give a special shout out to Todd Schwarenbeck. I hope I said that right for 
subscribing this week and joining our Patreon. So thanks, Todd. We appreciate your support. Sheeran back. Sheeran back. Thank you, Bill. And that's why Bill's on the show tonight. <laughs> CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash support or head over to Patreon and search Cincinnati Soccer Talk. Appreciate all of you that listened live. We had a big crowd here tonight. And um, we're going to get into the final thoughts, and then we will end this show. Brian, you are up first. Yeah, just uh, happy to be here with you guys, uh, some of the OGs here. And uh, thank you for coming back, Nick, for for the special. And Bill, love talking with you guys. Uh, Lots of ups and downs through the past eight, nine years with you guys. And uh, wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. Um, uh, Brad couldn't make it for some health reasons tonight. Uh, I wish we would have had him, Yosef. Uh, but again, so much love to all the guys here as well. Jason, you've been here a bunch, Jeremy, I mean, Josh, Justin, uh, Jeff, all you guys, every single one, Brian, the other, the, the more handsome Brian. I mean, all you guys, uh, you know, and we, and we all, all of our photo crew, writing crew, Jacob, all you guys, uh, Robert. So, uh, appreciate you guys, uh, very much. And, uh, you know, if you want to join and give us another 10 years, let's do it. That's right. Purely volunteer organization Cincinnati Soccer Talk is and has done uh, uh, quite well with people subscribing and, and coming on board and doing great work. Uh, Subes, Subes drafted a great crew. Brian drafted me. I think I've brought in a few more and it's just it's uh, it's a pass the buck, uh, pass the baton. Uh, type of organization it always has been it always will be so uh, as long as there's great volunteers and cincinnati fans there'll be a cincinnati soccer talk all right let's throw it now to sub's final thoughts well thanks for having me back i appreciated the uh, the invite uh, brian reached out a couple weeks ago and said hey we need to do this and uh, i was all about it uh, so um i appreciate that um you guys are I, obviously i passed the torch to you guys and you're you're carrying it uh valiantly and doing a great job with cst i love seeing uh, you know the sponsors the support uh, these ads i mean this is this is pretty cool to see what you guys are continuing to build so i'm really proud of you for that um and just thanks again for for everybody who reached out brian <laughs> you, I, that was another thing i got hit up on twitter from brian telling everybody to tweet at me about coming on the show and <laughs> uh, so i just wanted to say thank you to everybody who chimed in there as well who, uh, you know who had some thoughts about uh coming back uh, it's been a blast uh, reminiscing and uh, hanging out with you guys uh, tonight, and I appreciate the invite. And yeah, uh, let, let's go get that points record and l let's go win the cup. That's right. That's right. I'm going to be standing in line tomorrow for a t shirt, I think. Bill. <laughs> All right. So uh, Wednesday is the celebration, right? Uh, this is the big event. Uh, I, I'm hoping. Uh, I, I, I mean, it is a Wednesday, but considering. Considering the magnitude of this, I hope that we can have one of the largest marches of the season for this this game. I know that's uh, maybe asking a lot, but uh, you know anyone and everyone. It's gonna be warm, uh, right? It's gonna be nice. You know, it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be you know good weather. There's no reason not to get out other than that whole pesky work thing. But take the day off. What the heck? Um, um, you know, I'll write you a note. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, uh, but no, I think, I think there's the potential for this to be a, a, hopefully a large March. I hope so anyway, uh, for anybody who is, uh, just, you know, enjoying the spirit and enjoying the moment. And maybe as uh, Sherm said, has not been like involved in this stuff. Uh, certainly you can join SGs, but you don't have to join an SG to be in the March. Uh, you know, everyone is welcome. Just hop on in at any point and get into the, into the crowd and, and make some noise. Uh, you know, certainly if you want to start at a supporters bar, that's a great place to meet some of the other supporters and get going. But, but, you know, we hit Washington park somewhere around six 30, uh, and they've got all kinds of games and food and other stuff there. So it's a great place to hang out and wait for us to show up. And then, uh, you know, it gets crazy as we take that whole mass into the stadium. Um, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a special moment. Uh, and I, you know, I think it'd be nice to, to have a, a huge March with a lot of people excited about this, the shield, uh, event before we we get there so i hope uh i hope you join us and i hope uh i hope we have you know a, a day to remember that's right great bill thanks for being on thanks brian subes everybody for coming on oh man my final thoughts uh, just savor it if you're out there wednesday savor it uh, jump in like bill said uh just to echo his comments the part of the reason i joined um, uh, even getting season tickets was that I was new to Cincinnati and I wanted to meet people. And it's incredible now, all these years later, that 
um, seven out of every <laughs> 10 friends is probably from soccer. And so this is a great community of people that will accept you and will bring you in. And it doesn't matter if you're just walking around Washington Park or at a bar with Bill Wolf. Uh, somebody's going to call you over, ask you how you're doing. And, and it's a, it's absolutely a great place. Get out there. And uh, Cincinnati fans, uh, you've earned this and uh, appreciate it. We will see you again next week. Sorry for the hour and a half show. Hope you enjoyed it, though. Um, we'll do more of these. Thanks.